Hello and welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at working in 3D space inside of Fusion. This is a slightly advanced tutorial, so if you're not familiar with Fusion, check out our basic motion graphics video first. You can find a link in the description. So now that we're in Resolve, let's just take a quick look at the simple intro animation that we're going to recreate so that we can learn how to work in 3D space inside of Resolve. Please excuse the sounds in the background. I am babysitting a very cute dog that is a little bit desperate for attention. So as you can see, it's just a simple kind of radial gradient um, background with um, text moving past the screen or as when we go to animate it, uh, animate it it'll be a camera that we use to move past text that we've positioned in 3d space because there's all sorts of benefits to doing it that way so let's jump into recreating that intro we'll add a fusion composition it's by default five seconds long and we'll work with that i would recommend as always making your comp as long as you need it now rather than later and of course setting your project settings to what you need now so for me 1080p 25 frames per second let's go ahead and jump over to fusion so let's get the 2d stuff out of the way and this is really basic stuff so if you know it skip it background let's recreate the background so we'll make that navy ish we'll bring down a merge node uh, make that the background uh, bring this merge up to the right we'll get a second color background make that the foreground make this a lighter blue and we will use an ellipse mask we will, mm, no, that way is the way we want it. We want the center to be bright. Soften the edge, widen it to make it an ellipse. Soften the edge right out. And we'll increase that border width. And we might even go ahead and make that a little bit brighter. It's a little bit more obvious. Cool, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and Control G to group that and hit F2 to rename it. Background, bring down a merge, make that the background and send that to media out. And we'll bring up our media out in our second source window. And we have completed all the 2D myths of this intro animation. So let's move on to the good stuff. The reason we're here, learning to work in 3D space. So before I just delve in, I'll just give a little bit of info and if it clicks for you, great. If not, it should do by the end. Basically, when you think about it, we currently with media view everything in a 2D space or a plane. Cinema screens, monitors and TVs, phone screens, that's a 2D space. We do all sorts of things to create depth uh, in cinematography using all sorts of things, composition, lighting, focus but we work in a 2d space so if we want to do 3d work in fusion if it's a 2d item we need to first send it into the 3d world and then when we're after completing everything in the 3d world we need to send that out via this guy the render 3d node that kind of converts 3d stuff back into the 2d world which we can then send into our media out back into the edit tab color tab deliver tab etc so what do we mean by that? Well, let's grab a 3D text node. Da Vinci. Still can't spell. When will I learn? Control C, hit F2 on the node, paste that, and just rename that. Let's keep things neat. Now, this is a 3D item, and I won't be able to connect it to our 2D world. I need to send it back out. Of the 2d world into 3d and as i just said we use the render 3d for that so if i do that now i can connect up 
and if I just click on the center anchor point, um, so what's the benefit of this? Now I can do things with my 3D text, like rotate it in 3D space. So this is where we're getting the benefit of the 3D world. This you cannot do in this 2D land with text. You have to send it over to being 3D. Sorry, I'm incredibly distracted by this little dog in the background. Um, okay, so that's why we want to send it to 3D space, great. Let's uh, go ahead and reset those to default. Nice. Set everything to default, great. Let's go ahead and get another 3D text layer and call that resolve. Copy that, hit F2 on the node, control V and paste that. Uh, this is where we need to start using Merge 3Ds. And the difference between a Merge 3D is you can actually have way more connections. I actually don't know if there's a limit um, because what we have is scene inputs instead of a foreground and a background. Because when you think about it, we're working in 3D space. And what does that mean? How do we determine what's a foreground and what's a background? Well, we do that by actually moving an item in 3D space into the foreground or into the background. So let's bring up our Merge 3D into our left viewer. And as you can see, both items are on the exact same plane. So to rotate around an object like this, I'm hitting Alt. I'm guessing on a Mac that's Option. And then I'm using my scroll wheel button, not the scroll wheel up and down, but the scroll wheel button, and then I drag the mouse around, and you can, that's how you move the orientation like that. If I click on resolve, and I go to this guy here, and in translation, I have a Z space option. And I can move resolve back behind, because that's what we're looking to do. Da Vinci is going to pass by the camera first, resolve is going to follow it. So let's set that back to around minus eight for now. We'll finalize that in a moment. And if I hit control and scroll out, and we can have a look at that, we've moved that back in Z space. So let's talk about that 3D camera. Yes, I could of course animate this with two keyframes to move past the, ca uh, the screen, and I could animate that with two keyframes to move past the screen and it wouldn't be that much work. But imagine you had 20 words and 20 pictures and you had 40 items in total that you wanted to move past the screen. Then you're looking at 80 keyframes for no reason because we can add a 3D camera. We can add, like think of this as a scene as, as opposed to a merge. And when we're viewing this, this is our scene. Things connected to it are sitting in this little 3D bubble that we've just made. And we want to add a camera to that scene. Now we have a camera. That's pretty cool. And when you connect a camera, the view being sent out of the scene is now kind of the camera's perspective. And in your camera, I'm not gonna get too in depth about the camera, except for what we need in this particular tutorial. But I would advise just experimenting yourself with all this. You can change the focal length, the focal plane, which if I go down to control visibility, I'll turn on the focal plane because we will need that. And you can move the focal plane around. So that's essentially racking focus, but we just don't have depth of field turned on, but we'll get to that. I'll leave that as default for now. As you can see, just like how Resolve and DaVinci were on top of each other until we moved Resolve back in the Z space, if we zoom in and rotate around a bit, our camera, our camera sensor is right on top of the text so it's actually just off screen. If I move back even slightly, you'll start to reveal the word Da Vinci. And if this is looking familiar, that's because essentially, now this is essentially what we're gonna animate. So you can see, if I just do a start point and a finish point, but obviously more exaggerated, it's much quicker to just add a camera and, and animate the camera. And like I said, imagine if you had 40 items that you're moving the camera past in one long move. You just have to add two keyframes and you have all of those items moving past the camera for us instead of us moving the items past the camera. So that's where this gets really, really efficient. 
So, I'm just gonna reset that for now. So let's start thinking about timing just a little bit. Um, let's say at two seconds, so 50, 50 frames. I will want Da Vinci to be around, say that size on screen, there, cool. But I also want it to be in focus. So we need to move our focal plane, we need to rack focus further away to Da Vinci. So let's go ahead and do that. In our camera, let's move our focal plane away. And we can do that. Look at that side on. And that's looking pretty good. They're not gonna be exact, but our depth of field isn't gonna be infinitely razor thin, therefore, you know, that's good enough. So let's make this obvious. We'll come back to this properly. But let's make this obvious. If I come in to our renderer and I change our render type to OpenGL, I'll get some extra options. If I go to accumulation effects and enable that, our accumulation effect, the only one that's there, is depth of field. And that has rendered that frame. As you can see, because our focal plane is on DaVinci, that's in focus. Resolve is way back in the distance, that's out of focus. Now, our, we have very bad settings right now. Our quality is very low and our amount of depth of field is crazily high. Believe it or not, 0 0.2 is a very high amount of depth of field. I find 0 0.25 is actually a pretty good place to start. See, already that's looking a lot more realistic. And if I change it up to around 25, the quality up to 25 and let it render that frame out, Awkward silence. There we go. So it's very computer intensive. So you can only imagine, and you know, there's still issues with the quality of that. You can see it's, you know, you've got obvious kind of doubling up of things. Really around 50 is the way we want to be at for a final render. But for tutorial's sake, 25, and maybe you're on a more powerful machine than me, in which case, great, good for you. Uh, maybe not. So, you know, uh, play around with that, find what settings you can kind of push your computer to because once you start doing depth of field, it starts doing a lot of calculations based on things like your focal length, your aperture, all of which are things you can change in the camera settings. I mean, you can even choose your camera um, for sensor size and stuff. So it starts doing a lot of calculations to make that realistic. So why is this powerful? Well, because when we have our camera animated, which we'll go and do now, and I'll turn this back off because it's, as I said, really processor intensive. As we move our camera through, the blur amount will just do itself. You don't have to, you know, animate the amount of blur in relation to how far away something is from the camera because it's gonna do all those calculations for you. It is processor intensive, but it is quicker for working. So we'll turn that off so we can animate more freely. Let's go ahead. And so at frame 50, we want it to be there. So let's go ahead and go two seconds forward to a frame 100. And on our camera, let's go and move that through Z space far enough that everything just about goes off screen. So it just slips past the camera there. So let's call that minus eight. If I come back to the start and keyframe that at point, uh, sorry, positive eight. Uh, I actually didn't add the keyframe at 100, so we'll add that back in now. Put the minus there. Cool. At frame 50, we're going to be around halfway through that movement. But I'm not really happy with the size of any things at frame 50. Resolve, or sorry, DaVinci is already past screen and we kind of decided that's where we want it to be a certain size. So Resolve is gonna to have to move way back. Um, and DaVinci, we'll click on that. And we'll push that back. Oops, too far. I really jumped. There we 
go. You, you start to realize that the sooner you invest in a wired mouse, the better, instead of a very, very cheap wireless mouse that keeps glitching out and causing havoc. So we want DaVinci to be around that size. Let's call that minus eight. Resolve can be, what's minus 16 doing for us? Yeah, let's call it that. And our camera, let's keyframe the camera there. So let's go back over to 100 and we're gonna have to make sure that that's minus 16, so it's just passed. And now you can see camera moved past everything as we scrub through. And one last little thing as far as the camera movement, if I bring it up in our spline editor, if I select that, hit F, and we'll just make sure that that's a gentle ease there so it's not uh there's no harsh transition going on halfway through cool so we've animated our 3d camera now that's in let's go to frame 50 uh where so let's go in a frame or two more so a frame let's say frame 55 56 frame 56 our focal plane is on da vinci we go into our render 3D node and, and turn back on our motion blur and let it render that frame. DaVinci is in focus, resolves out of focus, makes sense. Let's move a few frames forward. Now that the focal plane is in the middle, they're both semi out of focus. We've got another few frames forward. DaVinci is super out of focus and resolve is almost in focus. Let's go a few more frames forward. And now that our focal plane is on resolve. It is now sharp. And obviously our camera is now moved past DaVinci, so is now off the screen. So we have successfully recreated that animation. So just to kind of recap a little tip for you, I would leave uh, the depth of field off while I'm working, kind of set the parameters you think are looking good, turn it off, do what you need to, scrubbing around, as you can see, it really slows down your scrubbing around. And then for your final render, just turn it back on and you will get your desired effects. As you can see, sorry for a delayed reaction. We will be doing a follow-up video to this very shortly where we take that text and actually extrude it to give it depth. And when you extrude text or any shape or object, um, you're more than likely gonna wanna add some lighting to the scene because that will cast shadows so that the depth you've added actually shows up as depth. So if that sounds of interest to you, be sure to stick around for that too. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in this tutorial? Let me know in the comment section below so I know to cover it in a future video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. My name is Lee Dalton. This is DaVinci Resolve A to Z. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.